Hello, hello, friends. It's Tori with Fox and Hazel. And today I'm really excited to be sharing this really easy, um, sort of like hand lettering watercolor tutorial with you guys. Um, if you came over from Page Flutter, then welcome. Um, so what we're starting with here is, um, this is gonna be a project that uses masking fluid um, to create a resist under our watercolor. So if you're new to watercolor, masking fluid is basically kind of like rubber cement in a lot of ways. What it does is it protects your paper or whatever's underneath it so that the watercolor will not permeate it. And when you peel it up afterwards, um, your paper is either white or whatever, whatever color you've painted. So um, I've already hand lettered out what I'm gonna put. Um, I am not a hand letterer, so that is not part of this tutorial. Um, you could do this, you can copy a font, you can do whatever works for you. And so um, what I'm using here for um, my masking fluid is, this is just a needle nose, or sorry, like a needle tip squeeze bottle. You can buy masking fluid already in um, like bottles like this. I think, I believe it's fine line sells them. Uh, I'm in Canada and they're like impossible to find slash if you do find them, they're insanely expensive. Like one bottle is like $25. Like masking fluid is $25 here. Why? I don't know. But so anyways, this is kind of like my cheap DIY hack because these little needle tip squeeze bottles are like less than $10 for a pack of six of them. So this is a really good option for you if you can't get your hands on the, you know, fine line, you know, pre pre packaged fine tip ones. So um, what you'll do is once you have everything hand lettered out, you can see now I'm going in with my masking fluid and I'm just covering my letters. Um, this part is the part we're going to cover up so that when we're done, our letters will be white in the midst of all of our watercolor paints. And I'll apologize in advance because my head shows up a lot in this video because I am the kind of person that when I'm doing something that's like detailed, uh, I have a tendency to put my face like six inches from my page. <laughs> so here you can see I've finished, I sped this up because it actually took me about 15 or 20 minutes to, to fill this all in. Um, you don't have to do something this difficult. You can totally do a bigger, chunkier font that's easier. It's totally up to you. And so, Oh, I apologize. That was my phone. If you heard that. <laughs> um, and so now I've let it dry. Um, you can, this kind of like can take, I don't know, at least probably half an hour. Um, I think I ended up leaving mine overnight just because I don't have a ton of time to film these things. And I think my kids woke up from their nap. So, <laughs> um, and the watercolors I'm using here today, this is my own tin that I filled with some of my own tube watercolors. Um, but the shades I'm using are, um, whole bean watercolors in shell pink and bright pink and then uh, Windsor Newton uh, sorry indigo sorry and so basically what you're going to do is um, if you came from page flutter then you'll know that the other pro um, sorry project that I had posted was about layering watercolors if you're new or not new but if you're not from page flutter and you're finding this tutorial um, what you're going to do is you're gonna make these sort of like really loose pentagon hexagon octagon, whatever you want to call them, shapes. And we're just going to layer them all on top of each other so that all of the edges of our letters are covered and then they'll have a resist. And so um, this technique works best when you start light to dark, much like all of watercolor is. Um, because of the way watercolor is designed to work, it's meant to be layered on top of each other um, to build up intensity. And so once you go dark, you can't really go back with watercolor. So it's always better to err on the side of maybe like a little bit less watercolor and then keep adding paint to it to get the intensity that you want. Um, because once it's on there, you can't put light colors on top of dark colors. And so I've also sped this part up and kind of like taken big chunks out. This video is like not very long, but this actual piece from this part anyways, all of layering these little um, hexagon type shapes actually took me probably like 30 minutes to do, but I didn't think you guys wanted to watch like 15 to 30 minutes of me painting. <laughs> so yeah, you just work your way around the page. Um, the most important part is that you want to make sure that our letters that have been blocked out by the masking fluid, that all of the edges of the letters are covered by paint. And so you'll see here, I'm starting to try and fill in the gaps um, to make sure that those letters all have um, paint around it because then once you go to pull that masking fluid off, if there's no paint there, then you won't see a difference. It'll just look like a piece of your letter is missing. And so you want to make sure all the edges of your letters have paint touching it. 
and you can see um, I do this and then I kind of go back and find a couple spots where I'm like, oh, I messed that and that's not quite right. And, and so you can just keep going back. There's literally no right or wrong way to do this. Um, you could see previously that I turned my page, like here I'm turning it sideways. Um, I am all for that. I'm not all about holding it the right way or anything. Uh, for this piece, the one that really sells it, that makes it look great, is making sure that the corners and lines on your shapes are as sharp as you can make them. Obviously these aren't like super precise because I, I'm not a super precise person, but you wanna make sure that the corners are really defined. You don't wanna have um, rounded corners or sort of blobby shapes. You really want the kind of angular corners and lines that help create the contrast and make sure that each shape sort of stands out from the other ones. And so, yeah, you can see here, I'm just adding in I don't know why I added that one there, but part of it too is that if you add them in, you'll also look back at your piece after you've done it and sort of make sure it's balanced. So make sure you have, you know, the same kind of shape overall. You don't have like a big gap in one spot or not, and you kind of want everything to be relatively even. And you could also do this with different shapes. I'm just doing these kind of like hexagon shapes because they're easy. You could totally do this with circles. You could do this with triangles. You could do it with squares. Like there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. I, I chose this color palette because it's really um, complementary to itself. You could choose any other color palette you want. Um, my only recommendation is that you make sure ones that you choose colors that blend well together. Um, I wouldn't recommend using colors that are true complementary colors from each other, which means like red and green or like yellow and blue. Um, only because some of them, like yellow and purple, for example, if you layered them, it would just look brown. Like, so it wouldn't be a very nice color. You wanna make sure that if these colors blend together, they're gonna to make another equally as nice color because you will be layering them. So now this is dried and I'm going back in. This is the Dr. P.H. Martin uh, Bleed Proof White. I believe that's what it said. Pen, it's on like white acrylic ink. And so I'm just watering it down with my water brush a little bit and I'm gonna just do some splatters on here cause like, why not? Um, I kind of was sort of going for a galaxy-ish vibe to it. I didn't really want to do like a true galaxy, but I wanted it to kind of have that essence to it, if you will. And so you could also do this too. So this technique of blocking out letters and then pulling up the paint afterwards, it, you could do this with any kind of background. I just thought it'd be fun to do it with these layered shapes. And so now... Um, you want to make sure everything is like totally completely solid dry before you decide to peel up that masking fluid Because if your paper is wet when you go to pull it up, it will tear, tear your paper I've done this many a times in my Experience <laughs> so make sure it's really good and dry like once you've put that white ink on there I would let it sit for probably like a good solid like 20 minutes just to really make sure you can hit it with a heat gun I do that all the time and just make sure your paper is really dry so now I already got into this before I had a chance to intro it, but this is the fun part. You get to peel up the masking fluid. Um, I'm using a Tombow mono eraser here because it's really, really fine point compared to most like um, eraser pencil things. And it helps to pull up the masking fluid if it's, you know, instead of like digging your nail into it or scratching at it or whatever, this just helps pull it up. And it's fine enough that you can use it on lettering versus like a big area. And so, yeah, this is like the last step and the easiest and most satisfying part is <laughs> peeling up the masking fluid. I zoomed in on it because I always think of those videos on like Instagram and stuff that are like peel porn <laughs> where it's people like pulling tape off like sneakers they've painted or paintings they've masked off and I like it. So I did that myself. Oh, and you can see there that that little spot in my N, um, that wasn't from my paint. I think it was a little tiny speck of like unmixed dye in my masking fluid. I noticed the dot when I put the masking fluid down, but um, I didn't think it was going to saturate down to the paper. So I could go over this with a little bit of white ink to cover it up, but for, for now, I'm just going to leave it. And so, yeah, that's it. It's done. Ta-da. And so um, I'm going to go back in with my uh, Tombow eraser and just erase any pencil lines I left behind. Um, I forgot to mention this. Um, when I did my lettering, you could see it was really faint. That's because I sketched out my lettering and got it as 
you know, as precise as I wanted it. And then I went back over with my eraser and also a kneaded eraser and tried to pull up as much of the graphite as I could because um, with these lighter colors, especially if you have really dark pencil lines, they will show up underneath watercolor. It's not opaque like acrylics. So any pencil lines you have, um, they do have a tendency to show up under lighter watercolors. And so lots of times what I'll do is I'll sketch something and then before I go to paint it out, I'll use a kneaded eraser to sort of like erase and like, it's hard to explain, it's sticky kneaded eraser. So I use it to dab and to pull up the extra graphite. So yeah, that's it guys. It's totally done. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you want more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe so you get all my updates and hit me up on Instagram at Fox and Hazel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.